Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will discuss the re reliability of trivariate econometric modeling. In the last lectures, we have discussed the entire structure of trivariate econometric modeling, where the system consists of three variables y, x1, and x2 that means one dependent variables and two independent variables. So, the way we have uh, last class we have uh, received the you know estimated model just to highlight here. So, we start with y equal to alpha sorry beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 and plus error terms. So, through which we have received the estimated models y head equal to beta 0 heads plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2. Okay. So, now the next uh, the moment we will get the estimated model the next step is to go for the reliability testing. So, for the reliability is a concerned like you know bivariate econometric modeling we have to go for again two different test structures uh, that is reliability with respect to parameters and reliability with respect to overall fitness of the models. So, now the moment we will get the estimated models. So, the testing you know or you can say reliability is all about we can say two parts. So, first is uh, to know the to know the significance of significance of to know the significance of parameters. Okay and to know the overall fitness of the model to know the overall fitness overall fitness of the models okay so this is how this is how we have to we have to go for this uh, assignment so now uh, let's we start with the uh, estimated uh, parameter side first then we will go for overall fitness of the models letters. Okay. So, then what you have to do? So, for as overall fitness of the model is a concern. So, we have to you know, sorry. So, for as a the reliability of parameters are concerned. So, we have to receive all such information. So, that we can get to know uh, whether this you know x 1 is a significant one or x 2 is a significant one. So, that means, we have to we have to take care of this beta 1 head and beta 2 heads. So, let me highlight how easy all about this particular structure. So, that means, in the first case it is reliability of parameters, okay. reliability of parameters. So, we, ha we have to report the results like this the estimated parameters estimated parameters. Okay. Then, estimated parameters then you know uh, variance uh, variance then standard error then t statistics and corresponding probability so estimated parameters we, we have to receive beta 0 head okay then beta 1 head then beta 2 head okay corresponding variance of beta 0 head variance of beta 1 head variance of beta 2 heads. Okay. So, then beta beta 0 head beta 0 head by uh, okay, no, this is square root of variance of beta 0 head. Okay. So, then square root of variance of beta 1 head. Okay. Then variance of variance of beta 2 heads. Okay. So, this is so we will call it a t here then we will call it a P, a P here. So, right. so, now t is nothing but 
beta 0 head by standard error of beta 0 head, then beta 1 head by standard error of beta 1 head, then beta 2 head by standard error of beta 2 heads. Okay. So, then corresponding probability we have to check it. Okay. So, where what is this actually beta 0 heads? So, beta 0 head basically beta 0 head is equal to y bar minus beta 1 head um, beta 1 head x 1 bar minus beta 2 head x 2 bars. Okay. So, that means we first uh, get to know what is beta 1 head and what is beta 2 heads. So, once we have beta 1 head and beta 2 head then we can able to calculate beta 0 head. So, the so the initial step is to know what is beta 1 head and beta 2 heads. then everything will be coming automatically. So, now so beta 1 head is equal to uh, beta 1 head equal to summation x 1 y summation x 2 squares x 2 squares minus summation x 2 y my into summation x 1 x 2 okay, divide by summation x 1 squares into summation x 2 squares minus summation x 1 x 2 whole squares. Okay. So, now uh, similarly beta 2 head is equal to summation x 2 y into summation x 1 uh, x 1 summation x 1 square right then minus summation uh, x 1 y uh, into summation x 1 x 2. Okay. So, divide by summation x 1 squares into summation x 2 squares minus summation x 1 x 2 whole squares. Okay. So, this is how the estimated parameters has to be obtained. Okay. So, now uh, uh, after getting all these beta 1 and beta 2 heads, so if you put here you know beta 2 head here and beta 1 word here, then you get to know the beta 0 heads. So, now we like to know uh, how is the structure of you can say variance of beta 0 head and variance of beta 1 head and variance of beta 2 heads. So, uh, after getting after getting beta 0 head, beta 1 head, then beta 2 heads. So, next step is to know what is the variance and once you get the variance, then you can able to calculate the standard error and followed by t statistics, then you have to go for the a level of significance. So, so the first uh, so means the a, a next step is a, just to calculate the variance of beta 1 head, variance of beta 2 head and also variance of beta 0 head. So, that means here variance of beta 0 head variance of beta 0 head equal to sigma square u okay, 1 by n plus x x uh, 1 bar squares summation x 2 squares plus x 2 x 2 bar squares into summation x 1 squares minus 2 x 1 bar x 2 bar summation x 1 x 2 ok summation x 1 x 2 like this summation x 1 and x 2 divide by summation x 1 square into summation x 2 squares minus summation x 1 x 2 whole squares this is what the you can say beta 0 head variance. So, similarly variance of beta 1 head is equal to sigma square u uh, sigma square u summation x 2 squares divided by summation x 1 squares into summation x 2 squares minus minus summation x 1 x 2 whole squares. Okay. So, this is you know variance of beta 1 head. Okay. Similarly, variance of beta 2 head is equal to sigma square u summation x 1 squares divided by divided by summation x uh, x 1 squares into summation x 2 squares minus summation x 1 x 2 whole squares ok uh, whole squares uh, yes whole squares. So, now so, we have beta 0 head estimated beta uh, estimated of beta 0 head, beta 1 head and beta 2 head then followed by variance of beta 0 head, variance of beta 1 head and variance of beta 2 heads. So, now uh, to get the exact value of uh, you can say variance of beta 1 head and beta 2 head uh, sorry beta 0 head, beta 1 head, beta 2 head. So, we like to know the value of sigma sigma square u first. So, the moment you will get the sigma square u then everything can be possible here. So, what is sigma square u? So, sigma square u is equal to 
summation a square by n minus k obviously in this trivariate it will equal to n minus 3. So, now sigma square equal to summation e square by n minus 3. So, now we like to know what is summation e square. Summation e square is error, uh, error sum square. So, which is not, nothing but uh, summation y squares minus summation y head squares. Okay? So, summation, summation y square equal to uh, uh, summation y square uh, equal to summation y minus y bar whole squares, similar, but summation y head square is equal to uh, beta 1 head summation summation y x 1 plus beta 2 head summation y x 2. Okay. So, this is how summation y head squares we have to receive. Okay. So, now, now everything you with, with uh, uh, everything is with respect to this calculation. So, now we have summation x 1 square, summation x 2 square, summation x 1 x 2, sigma square u, summation e square, then summation y square, summation y head square. So, now we have to just you know integrate properly to get to know whether the parameters are statistically significant or not. Okay. So, now what you have to do? So, the moment you will get this uh, variance of beta 0 head, beta 1 head and beta 2 heads, then you can just take a square root, you will get standard error of beta 0 head, standard error of beta 1 head, standard error of beta 2 head, then followed by t equal to beta 0 head by standard error of beta 0 head, standard error of beta 1 head by standard error of beta uh, 1 head then beta 2 head by standard error of standard error of beta 2 heads. So, this is how you have to you know proceed. So, now what is our agenda here? So, our agenda is our agenda is to get to know uh, what is this particular component and whether this particular component is statistically significant. These are the formulas or you can know structures through which we have to examine the level of significance or you can say test the reliability of estimated parameters for the trivariate econometric modeling. Okay, to, to justify the entire themes, we have to, to we have to take a, a, a you know numerical problems, then we can able to interpret everything, because these are all you know theoretical way we are just uh, uh, giving, bringing the structures, but actual thing will be possible when you have the data in your hand. So, uh, in this particular uh, in this particular setup, so we have taken a problem here, consist of uh, nine observations, uh, uh, and there are three variables here, y, x1, and x2. So by by the time wings, we should uh, we, we should not discuss anything about the uh, name of y, name of x1, and name of x2. In fact, when we will go for interpretation, then that times this you know the variable uh, naming is very much important because uh, by the uh, by the way of you know variables information we can interpret the particular things so, uh, it is you know uh, after reliability test and when we will go for policy implication or you can say detailed discussion about this estimated models so in the time being so keeping in mind these three variables we like to know how is this shape and structure of reliability of estimated parameters okay so now uh, we need to know first what is you know estimated model. So, the moment you will get the estimated model, then you have to follow the sequence. So, what is the setup here? So, uh, all together we have to set like this y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2. Okay? Then obviously, this is variance of variance of beta 0 head, then variance of beta 1 head then variance of beta 2 heads. Okay. So, followed by T of beta 0 heads. So, I am skipping the standard error component. So, T beta 1 head, then uh, then T beta 2 heads. Okay. Uh, then followed by probability level of significance, probability level of significance, probability level of significance. So, now what is y head here? So, now, now, we need to first calculate beta 1 head, beta 2 head. So, beta 1 head is equal to what is beta 1 head here? Now, summation x 1 y into summation x 2 squares okay, minus summation x 2 y into summation x 1 x 2 divided by divided by summation x 1 square into summation x 2 squares minus summation x 1 x 2 whole x 2 whole squares. Okay. This is how the entire structure is, is all about the beta 1 heads. So, now uh, in this particular information, so we have to calculate all these things, but you remember one thing here, uh, these particular items are in deviation format. Okay? So, what you have to do for this time being, so we have to trans, uh, we have to go for 
uh, in a particular structure. So, what is this particular structure? So, here the theme is uh, uh, for this particular problem. So, let me first we uh, means we will hi uh, highlight all these detailed steps through which we will get the estimated model. So, now this is the step 1. Step 1 as usual we like to uh, uh, we like to present the descriptive statistics. Okay. So, this descriptive statistics will give you the uh, you know briefing about this particular structures. Okay. So, the step 1 process is to know the descriptive statistics. Okay. So, descriptive statistics means the structure will be y uh, y x 1 then x 2. Okay. So, this is so we need to you we need to know we need to know the maximum value minimum value. Okay. Then uh, a mean. Okay. Then standard deviations. Okay. Then you know some uh, skewness kurtosis also required. So in the meantime, so we are you know summarizing with respect to maximize maximum value, minimum value, mean, and standard deviation because these are all essential for this you know uh, uh, to check the reliability of the estimated model. So now for this particular problem, so the maximum of y is equal to four four seven seven. Then this is one one three, and this is five point seven four. Then minimum is it two six two zero, then this is eighty, then four point seven nine. Okay, so mean is coming three five five three point five, then uh, it is hundred three, then this is five point one seven five, corresponding to standard deviation is six three eight, then this is eleven, and this is zero point three eight. Okay, zero point three eight. So this is how the entire descriptive statistic for this particular problem. So, now what what do you do? So, next step is next step is you have to give again the summary of the entire variables. So, what is the summary of entire variables? So, now for this particular uh, uh, problem, so we need to have summation x 1, summation x 2, then summation uh, uh, summation y, okay, then summation x 1 squares, then summation x 2 squares, then summation summation x 1 x 1 x 1 x 2, then uh, then summation uh, x 1 y, okay, then summation x 2 y, uh, x 2 y, okay, this, this much of information we need to Oh, oh no okay so what is summation x1 uh, summation x1 here summation x1 is a, 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 a summation x1 is here 1 2 3 6 okay so 1 2 3 6 then uh, summation x2 is 62.1 62.1 then summation y is 4 2 6 4 2 6 uh, then 4 2 okay so this is how the entire structure and in fact I have not added all uh, other columns here. Uh, I am just giving the summary of this particular result. So, some some x 1 square some x uh, some x 1 square is equal to 1 2 8 6 4 6 then some x 2 square equal to 3 2 2 point 9 5 okay. summation x 1 and x 2 is equal to uh, 6 4 2 3 point 9 then summation x 1 y is equal to 4 4 6 1 7 1 5 then summation x 2 y is equal to uh, 2 2 2 9 5 2 point 8. Okay. So, this is the this is the entire you know summary of this particular uh, problems uh, that is with respect to y x 1 and x 2. So, what do you have to do first? So, you need to quickly calculate summation y, summation x 1, summation x 2, summation y square, summation x 1 square, summation x 2 square, summation uh, x 1 x 2, summation x 1 y, summation x 2 y, uh, 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 then we have to move to second step. So, these are the entire information we need to you can say no, uh, we need to proceed for the significance of the parameters. So, then we have to move to the step 3. What is the step 3 process? Now, the step 3 process is to transport these all these concepts, uh, all these components which, what we have received from the step 2 uh, uh, that in a devi deviation format. Okay. So, that means what, what do we know need? We need summation x 1 squares, 
then summation x 2 squares ok, then summation y squares ok, then summation x 1 summation x 1 x 2 then summation uh, x 1 y then summation x 2 y ok. Uh, I think this much uh, this much is enough ok, Th three such uh, deviation format is uh, required ok. So, uh, here x 1 uh, small x 1 is a deviation format that is nothing but capital x 1 minus k x, uh, x 1 bar ok. So, that is uh, in original figures. So, now similarly we have to calculate summation x 2 square, summation y square, summation x 1 x 2, summation x 1 x 2 means some uh, sum of x 1 minus x 1 bar into x 2 into minus x 2 bar ok. Similarly, summation x 1 y means summation x 1 um, minus x 1 bar into y minus y bar. So, okay. so, this is all about in a deviation format. So, we directly transfer enter item into deviation format. So, that uh, we can quickly uh, we can quickly have the t calculated uh, t calculated value. Okay. So, now uh, we like to know what is summation x 1 square summation x 1 square equal to 3 3 1 6 5 then summation y square equal to 4 2 3 uh, 5 8 7 5 6 then summation x 1 y equal to uh, 1 1 6 7 6 2 1 then summation x 1 and x 2 equal to 1 6 2 6 point 7 then summation x 2 y uh, equal to 5 7 4 4 7 point 7 ok. So, these are the items we have to receive uh, we have to receive from in a deviation format ok. So, the moment you will get the in a deviation format then your step is very smooth now. So, we can proceed very quickly ok. So, what do, what do you do now? So, we need to know what is the in the step 4 we step 4 we like to know uh, the uh, beta 0 head value then beta 1 head value then beta 2 head value ok. So, what is beta 1 head here? So, beta 1 head beta 1 head is equal to here uh, summation uh, summation x 1 y into summation x 2 squares um, minus summation uh, x 2 y into summation x 1 x 2 ok. So, divide by that summation x 1 square into summation x 2 square minus summation x x 1 x 2 whole square. So, that is called as a you know determinant a let us assume that this is a determinant a. So, similarly this is nothing but summation x 2 y a into summation x 1 square uh, minus summation x 1 y into summation x 1 x 2 uh, divide by mod a ok divide by mod a ok. So, now if you if you if once you get this particular value then you put in beta 0 head ok by the calculation. So, what we have received? So, we have received uh, we have received the items uh, let us say uh, we, we can directly move to step uh, 4. So, we have to re, 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 write like this y head equal to beta 0 head which is nothing but minus uh, 4334 4334.13 4, then plus uh, 34.875 then uh, uh, this is obviously x 1 plus uh, 83. 83 83 eight, sorry 8 830 4.04 x 2 ok. So, that means this is beta 0 head this is beta 1 head and this is beta 2 head. So, I, I have here omitted number of steps because uh, because of lack of time uh, the way is because we have already reported here the all these figures. So, you just put all these figures here then you calculate. Uh, if you apply in scientific calculator you can say excel sheet you can directly get this, but this is how you, uh, you have to proceed and ultimately you will get this particular uh, figure. So, this is for the uh, uh, this will get letters first we will calculate this one then you have to calculate this one then put this and uh, this and this in a equation uh, one. So, that is what is now known as y bar minus beta 1 head x 1 bars minus beta 2 head x 2 bars ok. If it is uh, equation 1 then you put this one then you will get beta 0 head. So, that means, uh, the estimated value of beta 1 beta 0 head is 4334.13 then beta 1 head is 34.875 and beta 2 head is 830.04 uh, 30 ok. So, now we like to know what is the 
variance of this particular structures. Okay. So, what is the variance of this particular structures? So, now what you have to do? So, we have to move to step 5. Okay. Step, uh, you have to move to step 5. So, now uh, uh, once you have uh, once you have beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 head. So, then you have to calculate the variance of beta 0 head. So, variance of beta 0 head uh, is equal to uh, 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 you have to find out and variance of beta 1 head you have to also find out and variance of beta two, uh, beta 2 head also you have to find out. Okay. So, now I am not writing directly. So, ultimately uh, the way we will move to variance of beta 0 uh, head or from beta 1 head to variance of beta 1 head and variance beta 2 head to variance of beta 2 head, then of course, we have to move again for standard error of standard error of beta 0 head, then we have to again move for standard error of beta 1 head, then again we have to move for standard error of beta 2 head. Okay. So, this is how you have to proceed. Ultimately, again we have to move for T of beta 0 head then again we have to move for t of beta 1 head again we have to move for t beta 2 heads so of course we need to know this and this this and this then t beta 0 head equal to beta 0 head by standard error of beta 0 head so similarly t beta 1 head and similarly t beta 2 head so now we like to know what is this value what is this value and what is this value so this particular value if we calculate by by uh, you know by putting all these values in a, that particular e equation then a standard error of beta 0 head we have to receive here 546 546.79 uh, by the way i am omitting few steps here uh, because if we we'll go uh, you know each each steps uh, one by one then it will take lots of time so you just uh, uh, remember this particular formula and i have already calculated the deviation values so you put all these values in that particular equation then you will be able to get the vari uh, variance of beta 0 head variance of beta 1 head and variance of beta 2 head so now i am not directly calculating all these figures so here i am just reporting so that we can quickly proceed for the significance level because ultimately our aim is to know whether this particular item is statistically significant or not okay so but we need to have calculated value first and we need to have a stabulated value so calculated value you have to calculate by this process so the basic idea is just to know briefly descriptive natures and actually this descriptive nature in fact in the initial it will not help it will help in the later stage when we will go for interpretation okay so uh, you know by the way as per this stepwise process so we have to we have to little bit know about the descriptive because it it can give you the a variance uh, vari a variation between all sample points okay so then we have to go for step 1 so where you will uh, represent the summary of all these variables then you transport this summary of variables into deviation format in step 3 then now uh, in the step 4 you just quickly calculate the parameters beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 head then uh, in the next step step 5 we have to calculate the variance of beta 0 head variance of beta 1 and variance of beta 2 head so the formulas i have already a, a presented here. So, now what I have to do? I am just already uh, I have already uh, figure out this particular problem. So, all these you know uh, information which is readily available here it can be transferred into the deviation format just uh, you add three columns here y x 1 y x 2 then x 1 and x 2 x 1 square x 2 square y square. Okay. So, this color six columns once you add then obviously you make it you know some total then uh, uh, the entire you know uh, the summary of this particular variables in capital format you, you will receive immediately so by the way in the you know by mathematical formula you have to transfer into the deviation format then the through the deviation format then everything will be in a sequence okay so now here uh, by this process so we have received a standard error of a standard error of beta 0 head equal to 546.79 standard of beta 1 head equal to 4.509 and standard of beta 2 head is nothing but 130.130.93 by the way even if you can also skip the standard error of beta 0 head standard of beta 1 head and standard of beta 2 you can directly get the t beta 0 head t beta 1 head to beta 2 heads but uh, you know before that once you have standard error then you have to uh, you have to integrate with the hypothesis okay that is a, a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis null hypothesis that 
beta 0 head equal to 0, beta 1 head equal to 0, beta 2 head equal to 0. So, that means, we start with that the, uh, the coefficients are not at all significant, they are, no, uh, they, they are not contributing anything. Then ultimately, we have to set the alternative hypothesis uh, corresponding to beta 0 head, beta 1 head and beta 2 heads. So, here uh, in the case of alternative hypothesis for beta 0 head is equal to means uh, beta, beta 0 head not equal to 0 and for beta 1 head, so beta 1 head not equal to 0, then for beta 2 head uh, no alternative hypothesis beta 2 not equal to 0. So, that means in the null hypothesis, uh, uh, we assume that beta 0 head equal to 0, beta 1 head equal to 0 and beta 2 head equal to 0. Then alternative hypothesis we will set beta 1 head not equal to 0, beta 2 head not equal to 0 and beta 3 head not equal to 0. The moment we will put not equal to 0 alternative hypothesis, that means it will give signal uh, uh, in two ways. It, uh, that means, we can go for either one tail test or we can go for two tail test. Okay. So, that is you know speciality how you are you are setting the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. By the, by the way, so we need to uh, by, uh, by the help of null hypothesis setting and the uh, standard error of uh, all these parameters, then we can able to calculate the t statistics. Okay. So, now if we will apply by this particular process, then t of beta 0 head you will get here 6.3 for uh, no sorry uh, t of beta 0 head equal to it is coming negative and uh, that is uh, that is uh, minus 7.926 okay then t of beta 1 is coming here uh, 7.735 and t of beta 2 head 2 b head is coming uh, coming here 6.340 okay so that means uh, we will just bring it here so, 2 beta 0, t beta 0 head equal to minus 7.926, then t of beta 1 head is equal to 7.735 and t of beta 2 head equal to 6.340. So, this is also very high, this is also very high and this is all very high. So, now what you have to do? Uh, in fact, uh, the high may be you know create some distance, the high does not mean that the variable will be statistically significant. because the significance of this particular item depends upon the tabulated value and tabulated value also depends upon the level of sample size. Okay. So, now sample size uh, uh, and the involvement of variables are the two indicators through which we, we can get the significance level. So, now uh, very quickly we can assess the tabulated value from the tables. So, that is with respect to this degrees of freedom. So, uh, you know where n equal to 9 and k represents 3. Okay. So, now corresponding to this n and k and uh, you know one tailed and two tailed test at 1, 1 percent level, 5 percent level or 10 percent level. So, you start with 1 percent first, if it is ok then you proceed, uh, if it is not then you have to go for 10, 5 percent, if not then you have to go for 10 percent. So, let us assume that uh, at 1 percent level, so it is actually say 2.96 uh, and this is called 2.96 and this is called 2.96. That means, in this particular problem, uh, uh, you know x 1 is statistically significant, x 2 is statistically significant. That means, the beta 1 coefficient is statistically significant, beta 2 coefficient is statistically significant. That means, both x 1 and x 2 are uh, uh, you know significant factors through uh, which y can be a change or you can say y significantly influenced by x 1 impact and x 2 impact. This is how the uh, model can be interpreted. So, that means, in this particular models, so, x 1, x 2 are highly significant factors uh, through which y will change uh, in this particular setup. So, now, now uh, this is one part of the problem, okay. uh, so for as a uh, reliability of the parameters is concerned. So, similarly, we quickly have the structure of the uh, ANOVA, okay. so that is an analysis of variance, so that will bring the overall fitness of this particular system. So, the way we will means we have already proceeded uh, the calculation of you know beta 0 head to t of beta 1 beta 0 head and beta beta 1 head to t of beta 1 head and beta 2 head to t of beta 2 head then we have followed the statistical procedure through which we get we get to know the uh, uh, statistical significance of the parameter similarly uh, uh, ANOVA is also uh, uh, in that particular track okay. in fact we have discussed details the ANOVA analysis of variance in the bivariate setup. So, now same thing it can be represented here just an addition of another variables. Let me explain what is this particular structure of ANOVA. Okay. So, now 
So, here ANOVA, so now second part of this particular uh, reliability is ANOVA, okay. So, ANOVA means analysis of variance which we have already discussed. So, ANOVA structure is like this. So, we like to know the sources of variations, sources of variation. In fact, uh, in fact, the uh, structure of you know ANOVA is uh, in fact structure of the estimated parameters also more or less same. So, uh, in comparison with the bivariate setup. In the bivariate setup, there is only oh, you know two variables y x one x one say, and in the case of trivariate, it is y x one and x two, uh, and again for multivariate, it will really depends upon how many independent variable you are integrating in the system. So after this lecture, we can quickly proceed to multivariate analysis, and we can discuss detail about that issue. So in the meantime. Uh, uh, the way we have uh, you know finalized the uh, bivariate setup, the same thing we have here also in the trivariate setup. So more or less in the case of ANOVA, the table is um, you know, very unique. Okay, there is no such uh, change. But uh, uh, so far as the value of that particular component, uh, concern component like error uh, error sum square, you can say residual sum square, there is a change because this formula is slightly different from this particular bivariate setup. Because why? Because uh, there is a involvement of third variable in this particular system. So, obviously, what uh, first of all we bring this ANOVA tables, then we quickly highlight what is the setup here in the trivariate setup. So, now this is sources of variations, okay. So, then uh, next is uh, sum squares, then uh, mean sum squares, okay. So, then degrees of freedom then f statistic and probability level of significance okay p okay so sources of variations is you can say ess then rss then tss okay so which we have already uh, which we have already received okay so uh, uh, what is this sum square here sum square is here if uh, for ess it is a summation y head square this is summation e squares and this is summation y squares okay so corresponding to uh, this one so your mean sum square equal to uh, summation y head square divided by k minus 1 then this is summation e square by n minus k and this is summation y square by a n minus 1 okay k k cancel it is the sum of these two okay so now this is k minus 1 degrees of freedom this is n minus k degrees of freedom this is n minus 1 degrees of freedom okay so now we come to the f statistic subsequently so you see here the entire structure is more or less same like bivariate issue so only only difference is here is that so the, uh, the k value only okay in the case of bivariate setup k equal to 2 obviously n according to your you know problem setup so but in mathematically in the case of bivariate k equal to 2 but n depending upon your sample size in the case of trivariate this k becomes 3 on that is the only difference in this particular structures of course there is a uh, there is a change in between the a uh, inside picture of this particular sum squares okay so what is this difference let's see here so now uh, uh, as usual summation y square will be remain same summation y square equal to summation y squares minus n y bar squares so this is how we have to receive summation y minus y by r square this is in deviation format uh, you remember one thing uh, when we move from bivariate to trivariate or trivariate to multivariate so that means uh, when we move from k equal to 2 to k equal to 3 k equal to 4 k equal to 5 k equal to n so in all the cases whatever you know size of your model so your you know summation y square is always same okay it will not change at all only change is on the right hand side okay so that is how the summation y square in that is in the left side uh, which is considered as a dependent variable is it remain uh, remain fixed okay only change is with respect to independent variables that is what the trivariate and multivariate uh, all about okay so now uh, uh, summation y square summation y square case is uh, almost all same for bivariate trivariate and multivariate but uh, there is a change uh, with respect to ess with respect to rss only okay so that means in the case of tss so it is it is same for bivariate models, uh, trivariate model, and multivariate model. Okay, so it is not it is not at all different. Okay, so it is more or less more or less same. Okay, so now we will see what is ESS here. 
So, ESS is nothing but summation y head square. So, summation y head square. So, summation y head square can be uh, written like this uh, summation y head square is ESS. So, which is nothing but written like beta 1 head summation y x 1 plus beta 2 head uh, summation y x 2. Okay. So, in the case of you know bivariate models, we write summation y head square equal to uh, beta beta 1 head square summation x square okay beta 1 actually beta 1 head square summation x square so beta 1 head square equal to summation x 1 y y summation x square so here also same thing so what we have do we put it in a different particular format okay so you see here so beta 1 head square summation x square means summation uh, you know uh, if you put to, instead of x if you put x 1 then it is nothing but summation x 1 y divide by summation x 1 square. So, it is summation x 1 square. So, summation x 1 square uh, this is also square because beta 1 square here. So, this is summation x 1 square. So, summation x 1 square summation x 1 square co cancel. So, it is nothing but summation x 1 y whole square by summation uh, you can say x 1 square. This is what is called as a summation y head square. Alright. So, now uh, similarly uh, 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 it can be written like beta 1 head summation y x 1. So, okay. so, the way we re redesign, so it will be only this particular format. Okay. So, now since there is another involvement, another variable involvement, so there is another term here involved in the numerator side. Okay. So, in the below the summation y square is there, it is remain constant that is total sum square. So, this is y head square. So, obviously, so summation e square equal to summation y, y square minus summation y head square. So, what is the procedure here? The procedure is we first have summation obviously summation y square in the very beginning we have. So, we have to calculate summation y head square because beta 1 head is already with us beta 2 head is already with us summation y x 1 we have already calculated summation y, y x 2 also we have already calculated. So, now we have to just process it then ultimately we will get summation y head square. So, the moment you will get summation y head square and you have already summation y square small y square. So, you just make a subtraction then you will get the summation e square. Okay. So, once you have this one this one and this one. So, then you can able to get the mean sum squares okay, with respect to error sum square residual sum square and total sum square provided it has to be integrated with the proper degrees of freedom. Okay. So, now ultimately in this ANOVA uh, we have two different objectives okay, all together. Uh, first objective is to know what is R square value okay, and second objective is <coughs> whether this R square value is statistically significant for that we need to have F value. So, that means, uh, an ANOVA is meant to uh, uh, bring the overall fitness of the model which is judged by R square that is coefficient of determination and and the other side f which can justify the significance of this overall fitness of the model that is r square. In fact, here the adjusted r square which we have discussed in the bivariate uh, has lots of you know meaningful interpretation in the case of trivariate because adjusted r square means it is r square is adjusted with respect to degrees of freedom. In the case of bivariate the degrees of freedom cannot change okay in my it's a n minus 2 it's a same but the degrees of freedom uh, can change here because we have introduced uh, third variables okay uh, uh, that means k is 3 here so obviously adjusted r square will uh, get affected uh, means in uh, frankly in reality adjusted r square has a meaningful interpretation if we integrate both n and k so that means it depends it adjusted with respect to sample size as well as the involvement of variables in the systems. So, n represents sample size and k represents the involvement of variables in the system. So, if we integrate together then adjusted R square has to be calculated. Let me highlight what is all these issues. So, the issue is here. So, we R square we have to calculate R square that is coefficient of determination. Coefficient determination in a means a the physical interpretation is that. Uh, the percentage influence of independent variable to dependent variable. So, percentage influence means it is the ratio between explained sum squared by total sum squared. Okay. So, now it is the ratio between explained sum squared by total sum squared. So, means if you go by mathematical formulation then it will be coming here. 
beta 1 head summation beta 1 head summation y x 1 plus beta 2 head summation y x 2 ok. So, divide by T s s that is summation y square ok. This is how you have to receive this uh, r square component. So, corresponding to uh, uh, r square we will get adjusted r square, adjusted r square is nothing but 1 minus 1 minus r square uh, I, I, into n minus 1 by n minus k ok. So, that means this is um, this particular structure is also in the case of vibrate setup, but vibrate setup this k, uh, k is equal to 2 here we need k equal to 3 ok. So, accordingly we have to get the adjusted r, r square the moment you know the moment uh, the moment you will add one after another variables in the system, then your R square value will be uh, uh, increased frequently. The reason is that because total sum, uh, it is the ratio between explained sum square by total sum square, but total sum square in every case is remains same, uh, whether it is bivariate or trivariate or multivariate, but uh, in the upper side it is adding frequently, because when will we, when, when will we go for bivariate setup then the item is this much only ok. So, when we will go for uh, trivariate then it is this much only means all together. So, now when we will go for you know addition of fourth variable then uh, it will add another item here beta 3 head summation y x 3 ok. So, if you add another variable then beta 4 head summation y x 4. So, like this you have to proceed subsequently. So, that means, uh, uh, if you will follow that particular path every time every time the numerator uh, uh, numerator numerator value will start increasing but in the same times uh, y square summation y square that is in the below side it is remain constant whether it is bivariate or whether it is trivariate or whether it is a multivariate case so in every case so you know uh, layer persons is always constant okay so once you add one after another variable so r square will be substantially high and high so that is how uh, when we will go for trivariate modeling or you can say multivariate modeling, it is better to have adjusted r, r squares or better to use adjusted r square rather you can say r square. And when we will go for purely multivariate models, that time adjusted r square is the much reliable component to justify the overall fitness of the model, because it adjusts uh, adjust with the degrees of freedom that is with respect to number of variables involvement and number of you can say sample size involvement ok. So, now, uh, now uh, corresponding to R squares, so this is how we have to bring the overall percentage influence of the independent variable to dependent variable. So, now it has to be tested. So, how do we test for that? So, testing follows F statistics, F is the ratio between ESS by RSS ok, ESS by RSS of course, it is nothing but R square by k minus 1 divided by 1 minus R square into n minus k ok. Uh, this is how uh, this is how this is k minus 1 this is n minus k. So, just we have borrowed from this particular this particular setup here. So, ok. So, this is ESS and this is uh, uh, RSS. So, the ratio between this particular two this particular two will give you the F statistic ok. This will give you the F statistic. So, now once you have F statistics then you have to proceed here for this you know significance level. So, now now, uh, as usual you know we have discussed in the T case, uh, F case is also same. So, with respect to you can say the variables involvement and sample size, we have to see the F tables and get the tabulated value. So, this is calculated value. So, accordingly we have to get the tabulated value, then we have to make a comparison. By the way, when we, when we will process all these inference, because we have already received the ESS value, we have already received the TSS value that means, we get we can able to now get the R square value ok. So, R square by the process is equal to uh, 0.982. In fact, I am omitting here these steps. So, I am directly writing the results means if you use all these information in this particular formula then ultimately you will get uh, R square equal to 0.982. So, similarly adjusted R square we will receive here uh, uh, 0.965. So, that means, there is a a drastic difference between R square and adjusted R square. In fact, between the two, this is more reliable than this one because it is not adjusted with degrees of freedom, rather, it is ad adjusted with degrees of freedom. That is why adjusted R square is 0.965. So, uh, suppose you are uh, you are very much interested for 
uh, overall uh, means judging the uh, significance of the overall fitness of the model. So, again in this case you can also apply F statistic and uh, uh, if you apply adjusted R square then F statistic corresponding it is adjusted R square by k minus 1 then provided 1 minus adjusted R square by n minus k. Okay, so, this is how adjusted it can be adjusted with degrees of freedom. So, now um, by the process we have to receive the F value. So, now once you uh, use this R square value then F can be calculated as a uh, 123.993. So, this is how the uh, calculated value of F. So, uh, so, this is calculated value of F, uh, calculated value of F and we have already received the tabulated value. So, now we have to make a comparison. So, accordingly we have to give a conclusion. But uh, uh, if you know, you remember one thing very, this there is always thumb rules. So, uh, whether it is the significance of the parameter or significance of the overall fitness of the model. If the T value by a uh, look uh, it is coming high, then no point to go for say, uh, you know checking the tabulated value. Generally, those Yeah, uh, you close just close your eye and you can say that it is highly significant. Uh, it is highly significant at one percent levels. Okay, so that means that is the best. Okay, for so far the significance is concerned. So now, uh, oh, oh, in, the, in, the, in fact, in the bivariate models, what we have received, both the uh, both the parameters beta zero had and beta one had significant, and in this case. Uh, also same things we have received means both you know R square is significant and beta 0 head, beta 1 head and beta 2 head significant. In fact, uh, over the long run when we will go for multivariate then you know supporting component that is beta 0 head has a uh, very less impact. Uh, we like to always look what is the you know uh, supporting factor to all variables that is uh, with respect to beta 1, beta 2 here all right. So, now since here the major uh, you know findings is that so, beta 1 uh, head is highly significant, beta 2 head is highly significant and in the same times R square is also highly significant. So, that means, the we this uh, conclusion is that the model is a uh, reliable one. So, it can be used for forecasting or policy use, but if by any chance if you know beta 1 head, beta 2 head, head are highly significant and other case R square is not highly significant or vice versa like you know beta 1 head, beta 2 head uh, is not significant and R square is highly significant then the model reliability has a weakness. It is not like that you have to look only one part of the problem. So, both the part has to be taken care of together. So, then it will uh, give you a bright picture of this modeling. So, uh, whether it is a bifurcated setup or multivariated setup every time we have to we have to go through particular process that is you know to check the reliability of the parameters and to check the overall fitness of the uh, model. So, if both are going in a right direction, then your model can be best fitted and can be used for forecasting and policy use. With this, we, ha we have finished this, you know, uh, this particular uh, trivariate econometry modeling. In the next class, we will discuss the multivariate modeling. So, that is more interesting, you know, more classics. So, we will discuss in detail. The, uh, in the next class. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.